imagine I will be talking to myself for a little bit, but if anybody shows up, please say. Whoops. Sorry about that. Forgot to knock off the other volume. Anybody here? It says people are watching, but maybe you're just passing through on your way to someplace else. I have so much work to do today, you would not believe it. Every time I think I have plenty of room, <laughs> I do something that proves I don't have plenty of room. Okay, I have to make tassels. I have to make so many tassels. Hey, Gina, hi. Hey, if it's just you and me, we can sit and talk for as long as we have time or if my voice holds out. It seems like my voice doesn't hold out as much as it should. I just realized I probably put my tripod too close. Hopefully I won't drop you on your head here. Ugh. Okay. Hello, hello. Where is, uh-oh. That delay. That delay always throws me every single time. Whoops, let's see here. Okay, everything else is set normal. Haven't streamed for a while, so I'm like out of all my normal tricks. So, you know, all these, these wonderful little patchwork things that I made that are going to become journals. Oh, good. Perfect timing. Great. Um, I made these patchwork things for iCAD, okay? So my index cards that I turned into these little patchworks. And I knew I was going to make them into journals. And so when I was posting about it online, I was contacted by somebody, uh, by a friend who does a project and needed some things for her goodie bags for her project. And so she wants me to make 60 of these mini journals. So that's the awesome news. The problem is I don't yet know, hopefully I'll find out this week, if she wants the larger four by six size or the smaller three by five size. So I have enough of the patchworks done to do, uh, to do either size, but I don't know which size yet. So I'm kind of going forward as though I'm making 120 of them, which is <laughs> kind of insane when I stop and think about it. But, Okay, so yesterday I managed to get tassels done on the blue ones. I love these. I just, I love the, I'm not normally a blue person unless it's my blue glass, but I really like the way they came out. And then the tassels are not super big and fluffy ones because the journals themselves, I don't have a finished journal here, but the journals themselves aren't real thick. They're um, covered with shoot they're covered with fabric I don't have one of the frames here they're covered with the I cut a template out of an old file folder I'm going to do a tutorial on it, but I cut a template out of an old file folder and cover that with fabric inside and out and then this will have some more lace on it where it turns out more like this <coughs> turns out more like this with the lace all over it and then that goes to the fabric cover and then there's just pockets on the inside and plain uh, paper so I didn't want a really fat tassel, but a little bit of something there and then a charm. So this weekend I did sort out all the fibers for 120 tassels and tried to figure out how I could do this a little more assembly line. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect thing to do while I'm live because I can chat while I do this. Because it's one of those things that it doesn't take a lot of concentration, it just takes time. So I did some while I was watching the ball game yesterday. So I got my pinks and my blues done for my small journals. So uh, let's see what ones will be easy to do here. I have, and then the dog dumped over my fibers. So I ended up with things mixed up. So yeah, story of my life. Oh, a 20 year quilter. Wow. Well, I had never done anything, anything like that. And uh, gee, I can't remember. Oh, it was Crazy Rebecca Dances with Pitbulls. I don't know if you watch her videos as a quilter. You might really enjoy her videos. Um, she's called Crazy Rebecca, I learned, because she's a crazy quilter. And I have all my life, I have loved crazy quilts, um, but never been a sewer. And, you know, have sewing trauma for many years past. And so when uh, I saw the series that she was doing and I had just got my sewing machine and I was thinking, wow, maybe, maybe I can do something like that. Hey, Lorna, how are you? 
And so the first patchwork things I did were with paper. And uh, I just fell in love with it. And so then ICADs came along and I thought, well, I'll make some more of these. I was just telling Gina, <laughs> I don't know if you heard, I have an order for 60 journals. But the thing is, I don't know yet if it's going to be 60 four by six journals or 60 like this. Gina, uh, it's crazy. Rebecca Dances with Pitbulls is her YouTube name. And I'll send you the link later because I don't do very well with uh, trying to put a link on with the video. Well, doing the, yeah, I've never done an actual quilt quilt, but doing them on the little cards gave me confidence. And they make really, I don't have, I did three samples for her and I sent them to her office so she could decide what size journal she wanted because 60 of them, that's not going to be cheap. So she has to decide if she wants the smaller one or the medium or the large. And so right now I'm just kind of going forward as though I'm making, you know, 120 of them, which is the two sizes, because one of the journals uses um, the same size index card. Hey, Carla. Hi, Lori. Hi, Rosemary. Hello. Carla, my, my uh, lives are very, very random because my life is very, very random. So I just sort of um, come on when I have a chance and I put a note on the door. So if my husband comes home early, he often works from home and our house is so small that sound carries everywhere. So when he's in a meeting, you know, I hate to be yakking on a live stream and then he's in a meeting trying to be real serious and then I come along. So, <laughs> so we just kind of roll with it. And if people show up, great. And if not, I talk to myself because I do that all the time anyway. Well, yeah, okay, I have, here's the deal. I'll say it again. For ICAD, I was making little patchworks on index cards. And so I made some three by five and I made some four by six. And I, I couldn't decide which size I wanted to make. So I just kept making a little bit more, a little bit more. I made a sample journal just for the heck of it. And it sold really fast off my Facebook page. So I thought, oh, these will be some cute journals. So I posted my iCADs like spread out in a great picture on my uh, Facebook page, my regular Facebook page. And a friend of ours um, said, oh, those would be really great things to put in a goodie bag. Uh, she has an event that she's doing um, for young girls. I think it's eight to 12 or maybe it's 10. I think it's eight to 12 to get them excited about technology. And uh, she wanted to do something in the goodie bags. So I said, I would love to do, she needs 60 of them. I would love to do them for the goodie bags. That would be great. Um, but she hasn't made up her mind which size she wants yet. I just sent her the samples last week. So right now I'm going on the idea that she's going to want 60 of the, the three by five size. Cause that's sort of the medium price one. And I'm just going to keep going like that for a while. And hopefully I'll hear from her this week. I'm sure if not, I will kind of bug her. And I'm not doing super fat tassels like I would normally do on a big journal because these are just small journals with plain writing pages in them. So just a little something to dress up the spine. Yeah, it's going to be busy crazy because she needs them um, by the first week of September. So <laughs> pretty much my life is going to be all these journals. I mean, all the patchworks are done. I have all the forms cut for the, the actual cover from... Um, old file folders. Okay, here's my high-tech tool for making tassels. I slide them through my little ring and I have a paper clip here so that I can, because when I tie them down, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do this, but at least I don't have to like try and juggle too badly. I don't know. We'll see. Anybody got an easy way for doing, this is the part, I need like a macrame board probably. At least that's what I remember. Am I dating myself there? Anybody else make macrame back in the 70s? Hi, Maggie. Oh, hello. Glad to see you for a little bit before dinner. What are you making for dinner? Something yummy? We should all show up, right? I am Okay, I'll tell you how spoiled I am. My husband is the cook in this house. I am so spoiled, so lucky, so grateful. We decided over 20 years ago that uh, cooking relaxed him and it stressed me. So I do clean up and I don't do the actual cooking. Oh, chicken pot pie, yum, yum, yum. Is it cold there? 
right now. It's so hot here right now. The idea of something hot makes me kind of crazy. So I always think of tassels as being something that doesn't take that long to make, but it takes longer than I think. Everything takes longer than I think. I am so bad. If, if somebody asks me how long it takes me to do something and I'm not recording the minutes every second, every step of the way, I have no idea. I am just really, yeah, and I don't know how great of a time saver it was cutting all these fibers ahead of time or not. Hi, Liz. How's that new sewing machine of yours? Are you having so much fun with it? Everybody around me is getting these sewing machines and I have no justification. Mine isn't even a year old, but I want one with more fancy stitches on it. Oh, the mug makes it out of frame. Oh, the mug is just, let's see. Let's see if I do this. I'm making tassels, lots and lots of tassels. Lori, these are for those journals I was telling you about the other night. <laughs> so right now I'm working on 60 small ones. Can see, is that a little bit better to see? Junk journal shop. Hi, you're new to me. Welcome. So glad you're here. Normally, if I was making these on my big journals, they would be probably twice as fluffy, and then I would be adding lots of beads. But with these, for these little journals, I'm just going to put um, a little gourd clip at the top and then one charm that hangs off of it. Because I've got to be able to give her a decent price on the journals because she's buying so many, but also still make it worth my time. And isn't that the hardest thing about journals? Junk Journal Shop. Do you want us to call you Junk Journal Shop or do you have a name that goes with your thing? And am I going to feel really funny that I don't remember who you are? Because I swear I'm going to make myself a little cheat sheet. Yeah, so here's some of my covers. And I think I'm going to scan once I get the lace on them all so they all have lace on them like this. I'll scan them and put some of them in the shop as digis. But I'm so behind. I've got all my eco, my recent eco prints that I need to scan too. Please tell me you guys like make a mess of all this stuff when you're making tassels. Are you like super organized or do you make a mess like I do? Because I just, it seems like no matter what I'm doing, I make a mess. There's no easy way. Didn't I just have all these fibers all sorted out? Now look at them now. Hi, Anne. Glad to see you here. Hi, Maureen. Surprised to see you home. Thank you for popping over. Oh, Maggie, yeah, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to make them either. I, I figured if I do them while I'm live, I've got two things going on, and then I'm going to probably go rub some CBD oil on them. Okay, see, I just messed myself up. Why did I do that? I had the, oh, it's because I needed the space. Let me, wait a minute here. Let's regroup. I need more space for the fibers. All right. Yeah, I learned even just cutting the fibers, I was standing on my, I have a hardwood floor in the studio and standing on it because it took hours to cut these. I cut all the fibers for the large and the small ones in one day, but I had to keep taking breaks and sit down and then rest my knees. And then my arm and shoulder was complaining because I used them too much. Tina, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't breathe often enough. I get all like stressed. Like, like, I don't know. I've watched, you know, thousands, like all of us, watch thousands of live streams where people, where things happen and, and people are just being normal people. Right. But then I start doing it and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to, yeah, I'm all right. One, two, there should be seven different ones for each one, three. So as soon as you pick them up, then they get a mess again. Four, five. See, I think I'm probably missing some orange pieces here. Six. Maybe that's what I should do is I should group them first. Let me do that. See what's left over. 
Maureen, good idea to dye papers when it's hot. I was thinking I should do that. I should take a ream of paper out and do, well, we've got, you know, super hot weather here and do a whole bunch because it dries like instantly if you put it down when it's hot. I always figured the crafting police are going to come along and tell me, you know, you nuts, why are you doing it like this? Why are you showing this to anybody else? You shouldn't be doing that. But then that's the story of my life, worrying about what other people are going to think or judge. And I shouldn't. It doesn't matter. It's, you know, my stuff to do my way. But still, you never seem to get over some of those things that, that you, the voices you listened to when you were a kid telling you you weren't doing something right or you weren't doing it well enough or, you know, other people would do it differently and it would be so much better. I never get rid of those voices. Okay, let's see. I know, I know, Carla. It's just, you know, some of those voices. I'm 61 years old. Those voices, they are still as loud as, as when I was 10. I mean, I'm, I pretty much shut up my old home ec teacher in my head. So that part's good because, man, she was a brat. She just told me constantly, nobody's ever going to want anything that you're sewing. Your stuff is so sloppy. You don't pay enough attention to detail. You can't even cut straight. I'm like, wow, okay, so I suck. <laughs> That's pretty much the way she made me feel. But some of the other voices, especially, you know, and we all do this. I'm sure we all do this. We, we have this idea. It used to happen to me when I was writing all the time. You get this idea for a book and you think, oh, man, this is the best idea in the world. I've never seen a book like this. Man, my idea is awesome. And I am flying through the book and I'm just doing all these great things with the book. Okay, these are kind of wonky here. And uh, I don't know what I did with those. And then, then I see somebody else come out with a book on the exact same topic that I was going to write. And you just get so insecure. You just stop what you're doing. You think, oh, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Just checking out the rest of the chat here. Yeah, we are our own worst critics. Yep. And, you know, I didn't have everything I wanted to do in my life has been different from what um, the, the family members around me were doing. And so I just always was like the lone wolf. And I was never very good at being the rebel on my own. I've gotten a little better at doing it as I've gotten older. But, you know, I, I envy the people that at a young age said, you know, screw it. I don't care what other people think. And if you're at, a, at my age or older and you're just figuring out, screw it. I don't care what other people think. Good for you. But I need to remind myself all the time. And I, I admit that doing the videos and chatting with you guys is really good for that sort of thing for me. You know, I think, oh, I want to make a journal that's, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to say any styles or names or anything, but, you know, I want to make something like that. And then I go watch that person's channel just to kind of get inspired. And I see what they've done recently. And I think, oh man, no, no way. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. And it's ridiculous because of course I would tell my, my writing students, you know, I could give you guys all the exact same idea and say, write about, you know, a bear that sold a picnic basket. And, you know, some of the people would come up with Yogi, Yogi Bear but most of the people would come up with something completely different of their own. And even with the same idea, nothing's going to be executed exactly the same. So I don't know why we listen to those voices, but maybe it's because we didn't have enough voices telling us how awesome we were at the formative years. I know, Maggie, I know it's the same no matter what. I'm, I'm 61 and I'm just figuring that out. And I, I wish that I had known... So much of the stuff that I know now, I wish that I had known when I was in my 20s and my 30s. And we got to change that channel. Yep, change the frequency. Um, Annie Lamott used to say, I, and I won't say it on here because I think it would get me um, in trouble with YouTube, but Annie Lamott is a wonderful writer and of many things, writer on writing, but also a writer of spiritual writings and strong women and that sort of thing and she's very articulate and I just I love her but one of the very first books that she um, wrote that spoke to me was called Bird by Bird about you know going ahead and you just you do anything you know one step at a time I would tell my kids how do you eat an elephant and it's like once one bite at a time and she said there's this radio 
that used to play in her head, and it was channel K, um, KF. We'll just call it KF, and you guys can imagine <laughs> what the uh, the rest of the word was. And she said, you know, it would just scream all these horrible, horrible things to her. And she uh, she finally learned, you know, that she just had to, you know, forcibly tell herself that she was changing the channel off to something else, to one that told her how awesome she was. And so, I don't know, I'm a big believer in whatever you think often enough is going to come into to reality. And, you know, you can call it law of attraction, but I think it's just, you know, our, our brains are programmed to want to make us happy. And so if we're thinking all this, you know, crummy, crummy thoughts all the time, you can't help it. Your, your brain's going to say, well, okay, you want to feel crummy. I'm going to help you feel crummy. Here, let me remind you of every crummy thing you've ever done or said or been done to you. So if you replace those thoughts with thoughts about how awesome you are or how awesome your life is, it's really, really hard for many women to say, I'm awesome. I'm fabulous. I do this, you know, so well. It's, we're conditioned that we shouldn't shine our light on ourselves when that's exactly what we should be doing. But maybe you can look at things differently and say, well, you know, I don't know how awesome I am, but my life is pretty awesome. And I have this thing, <clears throat> if you're friends with me on Facebook, <clears throat> you'll see it every day. And uh, I, at the end of every day, I post what makes me happy. I used to post three things that made me happy and try and get people to, you know, play along with three things. But there are so many people that find it really impossible to post three happy things they're like no I, I I don't have my life stinks I can't find anything that's happy and I tell you I've been there um before I got married to my current husband um yeah I've been married a couple times took me three times to get it right but before I was married to my current husband I lived in New Orleans and it was not a good place to live it was not a good environment and the person I was living with was not good to me and before that, we lived in, I lived with the same person I was in Virginia, and it was just, um, it was a horrible time in my life. I, I had never been in a place so bad and so dark. And I mean, we're talking about a place where the pizza guys wouldn't even deliver. And I had just, I had never been in a place like that, not living with somebody that was so hard on me in so many ways that I couldn't find a happy spot. And I'm still kind of, like in awe that I'm where I am now, you know, 22 years later, I guess. But I don't know, just writing down every day, you know, I started changing my, my mindset by writing down every day something that made me happy. And honestly, when things were so bad in New Orleans, sometimes, you know, what I could write in my gratitude journal was I have a job, my dog loves me, my cat loves me. That was it. That was all I could manage during those kinds of times. And it got better. And then I got here to California and, you know, life is like all kinds of awesome here. I'm just, you know, my life is fabulous. But I still remind myself every day, you know, because you still have bad days where you just can't, you can't find the good. And I tell myself, you know, go walk in the garden. You know, the garden is good. Uh, have a phone call with a friend. That's a great thing. I had a great productive arting day, you know, that's a great thing. And just by writing those things down every day, I really think we can kind of change the channel in our brain to something more positive. Junk journal shop, Julie from old design shop showed you my channel. Oh, well, thank you, Julie. Oh, Rosemary, you're right. We do it to ourselves so we can do it. If we do it in a bad way, then we can absolutely reprogram it so we can do it in a positive way. Uh, and my kids, my kids, have, I mean, my kids are all grown up, but, you know, they still have a hard time figuring this one out. Um, my daughter tries, <laughs> bless her heart. She's, she tries. Some of them struggle. Some of our kids struggle so hard that, <sighs> that my heart always hurts for them. All right. Boy, I don't know that my idea of cutting those things out ahead of time really saved me any time. I think I'm sorting these things like five different times and I'm missing some. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm missing reds. Let's see what else we can do. 
Is that enough? Those are purples. What did I do? What did I do? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm a dingling. Some of them I didn't have enough of the same fiber. I see. All right, back on track here. Here we go. Let's make, let's pull them out first. One, two, three. So what is everybody working on right now? Besides Maggie making chicken pot pies for dinner. Mm. Unexpected packages are fun. You got to come back and tell us what you got. Carla, what are you working on today? You know, I started these tassels too thinking I'm going to make this humongous dent in my fibers. Oh my goodness. Tassels do not take that many fibers, <laughs> especially little ones like this. I have way too much of everything. Way too much of everything. Going to have to do something about that. Finishing journals. That cover, oh my goodness, that recent one you posted is just gorgeous. I bet it's going to fly right out of your shop. Are you still making your beautiful beads, Carla? That's when I think I first discovered you and your those beautiful beads you were making. Oh my goodness, loved them. Okay. Is this like watching paint dry? <laughs> we don't have touch yeah, the paperclip ones. I just found a bunch of mine that I had started the other day. So when I get bored with these journals here and I have some time, I think I'm going to try and finish mine off. If we had touch-a-vision, you guys could fondle all the fibers with me. I think that's why tassel making sometimes takes me time because this is like so soft. And then it took me forever the other day. I kept staring at this. It's like... I know this material. I know this. I know this material. I found like a bunch of like almost finished balls of them at Goodwill and I grabbed it all. And then, you know, suddenly I was eating dinner and I jumped up. I was like, oh, that's shoe shoelace material. That's what it is. So I have it in a whole bunch of different colors. I think somebody cleaned out their craft room and dumped it all at our local Goodwill with fibers. And I came home with, I don't know, probably 50 different types of fibers and like large balls. So I'm going to have to de-stash. Collage papers, Liz. Hi, Debbie. Oh, glad to see you here. Haven't had you in a live for a long time. You know, normally we would be over in, in Carla's old lives. The other Carla. <laughs> Oh, I'm still here, Lori. Maybe you can reboot. Is it frozen for anybody else? Rosemary, you nailed it. That's right. All of Carla's stuff is created with from just this huge heart, and it shows in her work, doesn't it? Absolutely shows in her work. All right. All my extras are going to go off to the side, and we'll just figure that I will find where they go later. I'm going to have little scraps of extra fibers all over the place. No, Debbie, I used to, we used to see you, though, in uh, Caged Fish's lives. That's what I meant, is that I just hadn't seen you in any of, um, because she stopped doing hers. Donna, hello. So happy to see you here. Ah, uh, but Donna, you have different talents. You have a special talent of helping people shine and and what we were talking about earlier i don't think you were here about how women just tend to hide their lights under a bushel and what you're really good is finding those women that are hiding under the bushel and you, you just rip them out of the dark and say hey look at this person she is all kinds of awesome donna and i went to high school together many many years ago <laughs> and she is like one of the best cheerleaders you could ever hope to have on your team i feel very blessed <laughs> Debbie, oh, sitting in bed and watching. Can you have the volume on if I'm sitting in bed watching 
videos, I usually have to have the volume off and just read closed captions. Okay, so frozen, huh? Interesting. Not frozen over here. We are lucky. We have really nice internet, so normally I don't have a problem. I feel so bad when I hear people talk about how long it takes them to upload videos, and gosh, <laughs> we have super fast upload speeds. Thank you to my hubby who tracked us down, such a great service provider. Uh, I was surprised that we were able to get it since we're here in the mountains and a lot of people can have, you know, like spotty cell phone collection connections and stuff. No one to disturb. Nice. Then you can do your own thing. <laughs> Lorna, what are you working on today? Bye, Maureen. Big hugs to you. I know things are crazy at your place. Debbie, are you doodling in bed while you watch? Debbie does amazing doodles. They're more, I mean, she does, she makes amazing art and she makes beautiful little books and collage journals, but her doodles, I just love her doodles. And Debbie approaches everything with absolute enthusiasm and it shows in her work. I just love it. So I know I severely underestimated the amount of time it was going to take me to make 120 tassels. So I think this will probably be all I'm doing for the next couple days. I'll get all the tassels made and then maybe the gal will have made up her mind which of the two sizes of journals she wants. So then I don't cut fabric for a bunch that I don't need yet. I will eventually make everything into to, uh, journals, but I want to get the commitment done first. Whoops, I don't want the big one. I want the little one. Tip for you. If you, like me, can never remember what size these little things are when you need to reorder them, I made a little card, index card, because I could never remember. And then I would go back to Amazon and it would see that I had like five different sizes. I made an index card and put them on there and put the millimeter size next to them so I could remember because I use a lot of different sizes. Hey, Joey. Nice to see you. Yeah, Liz, these journals are not going to be real thick. So I just wanted a little bit of something to dress up the spine dangly, and they're going to go for young girls. So I figure the little sparkly stuff is nice. And then I'll put a single charm on them. It's been really hard for me to scale back because I tend to do so much but these are going to be basically naked journals. There's no embellishments inside. There's just a couple pockets and the girls can do what they want with them. You know, it, it throws me through me off having to think about, you know, you got to get something for your time that's worthwhile, but you know, if somebody's buying 60 of something, you want to give them a good deal too. <laughs> so trying to come up with prices is hard. But I think I'll be making some little fiber packages to send out putting I guess I'll put them in the web shop because I'm my Etsy shop is going to be is going to stay strictly digital oh and I did not do that video yet but I have my first five people for my guest design team and I'm so excited so they've got their kits that they picked out and uh, they are going to be making videos using some of my kits from my Etsy shop. And I'm just like super jazzed. And going forward, rather than trying to do it with a date-like thing, I'm just going to do casual guest design teams. So if anybody wants to be on a design team with my stuff, let me know. Uh, just you know, drop me a note after the stream or leave a note in the comments. And I will add you to my list. And then just every month, I'll just pick a few people and... They can make something and not have to turn it in by a certain deadline. Just make it when it works for them because I think that way everybody wins. People don't get left out because, you know, they can't make it on a certain calendar. Things that a few people that wanted to do something, they said, I can't do it by the end of August. And I don't want anybody to feel left out. Yeah, Joey's stuff, she keeps you going. You watch one video and she's kind of like popcorn at the movies, right? You want to keep going and watch another one and watch another one. And then you get inspired to go play and, and not get enough sleep. 
Yeah, Lori, I'm excited to see what people create. I have to tell you, the first time I saw, when I saw Tracy Fox do the video uh, using a few of my papers, it, it was kind of surreal to me. I'd never seen anybody create with something that I had made. And it's a wonderful, surreal feeling. It was just like, whoa, um, that's, that's my stuff. I recognize that. <laughs> so it was exciting and interesting to see the kits that people chose to want to work with. I did not know that people, you know, whether people really liked the uh, leaf impressions kits, but several people chose those to work with. And so I can't wait to see what they do. And I have so many things to scan, you know, the all the recent eco prints and new leaf impressions to get in there. But uh, maybe when I can't tie knots anymore in tassels, I'll take a break and do some scanning. And I need to come up with creative names. How do you people that do kits come up with creative names for your kits? Because I realized it's really boring to say, and I created this with eco prints set number one. It's That's not very exciting and doesn't make people want to rush over and see what it is so I need to come up with some good names for these kits Debbie absolutely UK is included all over the world I've got in fact I'm trying to think I think there's only two people I've got five gals on the design team and I think only two of them are in the US so I will absolutely. All right, ma'am, sliding back in the chat here to see if I missed anything. Oh, see, I did it again. I did this the other day. I've had this this whole time on um, top comments and not live chat. I apologize. Anybody that I missed, I am so sorry. I just finished telling somebody about that. Oh, Maggie, what kit are you playing? If you're still here, I don't even know if you're still here. What kit are you using from Tracy? Let's see. I'm, I'm catching up here. Catching up here. Yeah, I could use tweezers to pull things through the hoops. This works. <laughs> Tweezers would be one more thing. It would get lost on my desk. Every time my husband replaces the tweezers, I say I want them for the craft room. He's like, really? Because, you know, haven't I given you like a gazillion of them already? And I keep, I keep losing them. It's happening. Okay. Wait a minute, Joey, you have. Okay, Lorna. You hit a thousand subscribers. Is that what it is? Sorry, I'm I'm reading things out of uh... oh the new kit, the stamp the stamp collector, something like that. I just watched that video this morning. Lorna, yeah, the iCads index card a day. Um, this artist named Daisy Yellow started it. I don't know, like maybe seven, eight years ago. It's been a while. And the way I interpreted it, I don't have her website right in front of me, but the way I interpreted it, the way I needed to hear it when I first saw it years ago was, you know, you can fit writing or you can fit art into your day every day. You know, you can fit a little bit of art into your day. Everybody can find, you know, five or 10 minutes to create something. And if you limit yourself to something like an index card, it's not so intimidating. It's not like you have to do so much. You just have to fill an index card. So if you're just looking at a little index card like this, that's not that big. You can do something arty, even if it's just collaging some papers over it or throwing some watercolor on it and making some backgrounds. And it really spoke to me because I used to do that when I was teaching writing and I would tell people, you know, don't tell me you don't have time to write because I wrote books while I was working a full-time job in the technology industry and I was teaching writing via correspondence school. And I was going to college at night. And I was still managing to pump out books. I was still managing to write and publish articles. You know, you just fit it into, you just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to take 10 minutes here. I'm going to take 15 minutes there. I used to write on my lunch hour all the time. And it's the same thing with iCAD. You know, if you take an index card and you have limitations, you only have to, you know, do that little thing on the index card. 
And she would put out, she puts out prompts every year too. And it's just grown huge. But uh, for me, I saw the ICADs as a way to treat it like poetry, which is another thing that works really well with when you're working with constraints. You know, if you tell yourself you have to write a poem in a certain form, somehow the poetry comes to you a little bit easier because you've got those limitations. And the ICAD did that for me with the art. And this year I thought, okay, one year I did nothing but backgrounds and then I made all the ICADs into little books. And this year, since I'm doing so many journals, I thought, well, I'm going to make these little quilted things and each of my ICADs will become a journal, which has just like exploded. Oh, Lorna, I, I get you. I This morning I got all caught up on comments because I was behind. And the reason I was behind was because I was having one of those doubting moments where, okay, so these people are here and I don't know why they're here and I don't know why they want to watch me and I don't know why they care what I have to say. And I hate it. I mean, most of the time those voices do not overtake me. But, you know, I just, I, I get a comment from somebody and I'm just kind of blown away that people enjoy what I'm doing. It really, I'm thrilled, but kind of blown away. All right, this I know for a fact, I only have two in this color thing, so that should be easy. You know what, guys, this is really helping me a lot. I am zipping through these a lot better than I thought I would. I guess chatting is helping me keep focused on doing these, whereas otherwise I would stop and go look at Facebook and I try. I did. I did some while I was watching TV last night, but not as many as I thought I was going to get. All right, let's just make these into two piles. That'll be easier. You're right, Joey. Debbie is an absolute iCAD pro. Debbie just she looked at those and said, "This is this is something that works for me. It speaks to me," and she's gone with it. Debbie's doodles and Vicky's doodles, I get so excited to see them because I'm not a, that's not one of my strengths. I'm not sure, I get, I think that's one of the things that, like I didn't make any videos for a while and I was nervous about doing another live even because this is the way my thought process goes. And I know, I know better, but this is the way it goes. I know how to do a lot of things good enough to do them for myself. So I consider myself a generalist. So I can, I can tap into a lot of different things, but I don't consider myself an expert in any, any one area. And it was the same thing with my writing. I was a generalist. You know, I, I mean, even though I published children's books, I, um, I didn't get known for a particular type of children's books. And I wrote articles, but I didn't get known for a particular type of article. And it took me a lot of years, and I still have to remind myself that being a generalist can be a specialty too. Ah, uh, but Lorna, you pick beautiful music. You pick beautiful music for your um, flip throughs. Sometimes I want to know what, you know, something is about, but people leave you a question and you always answer it. So I don't know. I, again, it's that self-worth. Man, I hate it. I hate, 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 hate that women struggle with that and men don't seem to struggle as much. Not to say that there aren't men that struggle with it, because I know there are, but you know, gen being a generalist means, you know, you're not the first person they call to say, how do you do such and such? And I think the struggle I had all my life, just because of the way I grew up um, and what I, I did, I never knew my dad. My, my dad was gone before I was born. And so uh, I spent a lot of years wondering about him and wondering what he was like and what I got from him. And then I grew up and found found out about him and it was a good thing that he wasn't around when I was younger. But when I was younger, it drove a lot of my feelings of self-worth. Uh, even though he never knew me, you still wonder, did he leave because of me? Uh, and he didn't. And, you know, that's another whole story. There's a whole bunch of that on my, my old writing blog. But this, the self-worth thing, like, you know, why would anybody want to watch a video of me making tassels? Well, because we all share, it's not the idea that I'm sitting here making tassels because we all know how to do these and nothing, you're not learning anything new, but we're coming together and sharing our energy. And I think anytime women gather and can share their energy, even if it's virtually like this and support one another, 
you know, it, it's just a powerful thing. Uh, we need to support one another because we didn't get enough support in some areas, may maybe because we didn't get enough support. Maybe some people get lots of support. It's, uh, it was interesting. I was chatting with a friend on the phone the other day along a similar lines and she, um, we just talked about how we had been raised differently and how her family was always out doing adventurous sorts of things and on the go all the time and very supportive and encouraging in every way to go out and live her life however she wanted to live it. And I've never felt like I had as much support as I needed until I married my husband to go do the things that I wanted to do. And not that I was going to do anything that was earth shattering. I just wanted somebody to say, that's okay. You know, go, go do that. Go, go make art. Now I can say, go make art because art is my therapy. Um, when I was writing all the time and I would hit writer's block, I would go to my art to kind of help break my writer's block. Um, when I was younger, I would go to my piano and then no longer had a piano and don't really miss that part of things, but I would go to art to break my block. And now when I'm making art and I have a block, I go to my garden and walking around the garden or pulling some weeds helps break that block. So tell me I'm not the only sometimes insecure person in the chat, right? Junk Journal July, I missed completely. I don't, I don't know what I was doing. I was snoozing until that was like halfway through. Okay, yellow, we can choose a different color now. Let's see, how many different things of yellow do we have? I'm not at all, thank you, Debbie. I was beginning to wonder, it's like, uh oh, I always forget there's a delay. I forget. Okay. If there's reincarnation and I can come back another time, I want to come back as one of those people that's just got so much confidence that the world, I just set the world on fire. That's what I want to do. I want to set the world on fire. My little corner of it anyways. I'm, I'm such a nervous Nelly. I don't travel well at all anymore. I didn't travel well when I was younger and I travel even less now that I'm older. Of course, I don't sleep well away. From, I don't sleep period away from home. I go on one trip a year, that's about it, for a weekend, and it's just about an hour away from home. Yeah, Lorna, the voices are always there. Even when my books won some awards and I would, you know, had some really great feedback on them from people that had been in the industry for a long time, I still was like, I could go to a bookstore and find one of my books on the shelf that just sort of blew my mind. I didn't understand it. And I, I wonder some of it, you know, was probably me always looking for certain people to acknowledge me and I've gotten past most of that, but I don't know. It's never too old. You're never too old to change though and feel like you can get that back where you can silence those voices I would probably do this very differently the next time I have to make so many of them, but I cannot believe that I'm making my way through this stack. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Whoops, forgot to cut the straps. Debbie, thank you. <laughs> Lorna, you went to India for two months? Holy cow. I would never be that brave. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. Wow. Did you go there and do artsy things? Hi, Pink Rose. Welcome. You know, it's funny. I guess I just, what I used to say when I was a kid, thinking back about what Debbie just said, I just wanted to know that I mattered. When I was a kid, I just wanted to know that I mattered. And I never felt like anybody said, you know, we're glad you're here in the world. 
as an adult, I feel like that. But as a kid, that was what I wanted is I wanted and all my books were all about looking for a place in the family to know that you belong, that you were part of a family. And when I stopped writing, officially told myself about a year ago that I just, you know, I'll be doing different kinds of writing, garden writing, but I'm not working on books for the publishing industry anymore that I'm, I'm done with that. And I realized that maybe it's because I healed myself a lot through the stories that I wrote. Lorna, you were just getting, oh, photography. Oh, yeah, what Joey said, whereabouts did you go? So if I go somewhere, am I going to see a whole bunch of beautiful pictures from India? Wow. I, I don't even have a passport which is not good. I need to go get one of our real IDs that we need to get now here in California, and I haven't done that yet. But yeah, I don't even have a passport. When I taught in New York years ago, I went for a week to teach at Chautauqua, and uh, I think I'm, I maybe averaged about two hours of sleep a night. <coughs> It was really hard to function on hardly any sleep and teach and be on all the time. But no, Liz, I literally driving an hour. Of course, I've got I've got some things that go on with my body that make traveling not so fun, too. I've got a bad back, so I don't don't sleep well away from home. Um, and I've got IBS, which creates another whole set of issues. So, yeah, j just taking a short trip to, you know, if I know I'm going to be having to go over the mountain, which means away from bathrooms, that's the worst for me. Trapped, not being able to get to a bathroom, then creates the stress that creates the need to get to a bathroom. Ah, I'm running out of places to put my little piles here. But I, I love where we are. It was worse at our old house when I wasn't happy where we were living because it was a miserable place to be living. And it was so noisy and everybody was so crowded on top of one another. I didn't enjoy being home, which made it very frustrating because I was home all the time. Whoops, what am I missing here? Ah, this one. And now where we live is just, you know, I'm happier than I could ever imagine being where I am. And I don't mind that I, I'm not out and about. I'm a very good armchair traveler. <laughs> Oh, well, that's good to hear, Lorna. <laughs> Mexico, Lori. Wow. What exciting things do you hope to do in Mexico? I'm also a really picky eater, Lorna, so I don't know. I like spicy food, but I think traveling when you're a picky eater makes it tough. I'm better than I was when I was a kid. Gosh, when I was a kid, I don't know how my mom and my grandmother put up with all my crazy eating habits. Whoops. Got to cut some of the tie things. I can't believe I'm making it through this stack. Honestly, I there's something about the accountability when you're on the camera. You can't let people not see you making progress in some way or another. I'm in the uh, Santa Cruz area, the central coast of California, so not northern and not southern, but I'm near Santa Cruz, California in a mountain town called Scotts Valley. Lori, it's funny. It, it's just walking out in the garden. If I start to get stressed now or, you know, I'm thinking, oh, this is not going to be a good day. Everything's going wrong or what have you. And I walk around that yard and I just see, I, I think about how bare it was. For those of you that haven't seen the video, our yard had no plants in it when we bought the place a little over four years ago. It had a full-size batting cage in the backyard and a couple of trees, and that was about it. And there's something so gratifying to walk around the yard and see things growing and say, I did that. I can't believe I did that. Yeah, Liz, I'm surprised. I did not think it would make me productive. I figured I would lollygag because I'm that's one thing I could say I'm an expert at. I'm an expert lollygagger. I'm an expert procrastinator. Oh, so Lori, you're gonna go for the winter. Wow. 
So are you going to take things where you can do some like small scale eco dyeing on the way? If you guys have not seen Lori's um, Etsy shop, Weeds and Seeds, she has, is that right, Lori, Weeds and Seeds? <laughs> Um, she does beautiful eco printing. She's been eco printing for years and she does some gorgeous ones. I was reading in uh, India Flint's book about how, and she's like the, the mother of eco prints, um, how when she travels, she takes little baggies and collects things and does little, little prints on fabrics as she travels. Oh, Shelby, you're in Southern California. Nice. Thanks, Debbie. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're so different from the other ones I do that are usually I put lots of beads and stuff on them, and I still might not be able to resist. But I really keep telling myself to scale back on these journals. They can't be they can't be as intense because then otherwise I'm just giving my time away. Plus, they feel good. I just love that they all feel different. They all feel different and awesome. Let's see. All right. One of you experts here. Is there any way for me? There isn't a way for me to look while I'm on my computer to see how long I've been streaming. Is there? I don't know how to. Yeah, I could I could use the tweezers. I did see that, but it this doesn't take really any more time for me to do this. It just zips through. I use them if I'm, when I'm doing the really fat journals, I do that. I use tweezers or I use a crochet hook. That also helps. Oh, Shelby. Yeah. Did you feel the earthquake in your area? We didn't feel the big one in our area. The years that I lived in Louisiana, the guys, I worked at an oil field company and the guys used to laugh at me because I would freak out at the hurricanes, just absolutely freak out when the hurricanes warnings would start and the sirens would start and they'd be taping up the windows and things. And it's like being in a horror movie as far as I was concerned, because it's coming for days. They start announcing it, you know, a week out that it's coming and it's heading directly for New Orleans and you know, do this and do that and all the prep work that goes. So you have like a week of anxiety, just building, building, building. And they would laugh at me because to them it was old hat, these storms coming in. And they say, but you come from the land of earthquakes. But I don't know, I guess because maybe I just, I grew up in California and then I left and came back. They were just sort of a way of life. They just, they just happened. Oh, Pink Rose, whereabouts are you? So you got, oh, yeah, until somebody dies. When my kids were little, and what was it back in the 80s, uh, there was a really big one in, our, in the Bay Area. And uh, my son was in a swimming pool at his friend's house, and watch the water just leave the swimming pool and I I wasn't there and I was just just thinking about that when I think back on it it was like that that would be absolutely terrifying to me watch something like that oh Bakersfield I used to go to skating composition competitions down in Bakersfield many many years ago when I was a kid I did uh, competitive roller skating we kept thinking roller skating was going to make it into the Olympics, but that did not happen. I don't know. Maybe it is now, but when I was a kid, it never did. You did eco dying on the campfire. Wow. That's dedication. That is dedication. Boy, maybe I should save my larger tassels for tomorrow and do them on live and go and cut out fabric this afternoon because I really, 
I thought, oh, no problem. I, I don't need to bring the other ones in because I'm not going to get that far on tassels today. But this is great. Oh, Rosemary, really? In California here, huh? Tehachapi. How long did it take to learn how to spell Tehachapi? I, I still, I would get that wrong in a spelling contest, that's for sure. We go to trivia night at our local pub every week and they alternate. It's run by the local librarians. <clears throat> and one of the ones there likes to give us really obscure historical questions that have us all groaning. And one of them likes to give us really interesting spelling questions. <laughs> and she told us the other night that uh, she wanted it to be not trivia night. She wanted it to be a spelling night. I'm thinking, Okay, even at the pub, I don't think you're going to get that many people there for a spelling night, but we get a nice turnout for trivia. Yeah, I guess I did. I have done a lot of different things. When I was a kid, I think my mom was trying to uh, just find things to keep me busy because she worked full time. And, you know, it was I, we lived with my grandmother and my grandfather for a lot of the time. And then for a while, we lived by ourselves. So she was just trying to find things to keep me busy. So I roller skated until I discovered boys. And then I, you know, was a serial dater. And I had a horse when I was younger for a few years until uh, we were in an accident. We, uh, we were walking down the street with some friends. We used to take our horses and walk down to the local 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee. And there was a section of road that was unincorporated and the fencing was all bobbed wire. And this gal was coming down the road and she had just gotten her driver's license and she just freaked out at this, the idea. We were in the country. She just freaked out the idea that there were horses walking alongside cars down the road. And she swerved and she hit us. And my horse went into the bobbed wire fence and rolled. So he embedded about five, six feet of bobbed wire in his body. And that was quite a chore to get that out, cut some tendons and things. And I wasn't hurt, just, you know, had the wind knocked out of me. I went flying over him and over the fence. <clears throat> but uh, that was the last time I had a horse for many years. He lived, he was, he just had to be, he had a long recovery period and my mom couldn't afford to keep boarding a horse that I couldn't ride anymore. So we donated him to a program up at UC Davis where they used horses for vaulting. And he was he was a funny looking guy. He was um, half quarter horse and half Clydesdale. So he had this huge broad back. And so he was a terrific horse for vaulting. And they enjoyed him for many, many years up there. They were able to give him the time to recover. And uh, then they he had people at vaulting camp all over him for years good old time it was uh it was hard to let him go but it was the best thing to see what a great time he had up there and how how much the kids loved him and then when my kids were oh gosh I guess eight and maybe like eight and eleven seven and eight something like something like that they were young um we got back into horses again there was uh, we were living out in a different area of the country and my first husband and I in uh, there was a ranch that had horses and they had like a real low key uh, petting zoo and they had horse camp for kids and just all kinds of activities. And so I started working out there and was able to work for board for a horse and finally got another one. My daughter got one and went through all that stuff again for years. <laughs> Lots of, lots of fun. Had a Arabian back then. He was awesome. Yeah, the horses were a big part of my life for a lot of years until, you know, boys, boys. I was one of those girls that was just so boy crazy. Luckily, school was easy for me, so it didn't get in the way of my schooling because that, that wouldn't have gone over well, but so I skated, yeah, and then I got married right out of high school, which, you know, wasn't, I wasn't thinking real clearly, but I got married, you know, not long after I graduated and had my kids and did all the 
little league mom stuff and dance hall mom and all that kind of stuff. And then the horses. And then when we got divorced, I went cross country, which was real. I mean, as terror. Okay. I was pretty much borderline uh, agoraphobic, but I drove cross country and uh, moved to Virginia and then ended up in new Orleans. And then after a few years back here in California. So yeah, things are calmer now. Worked in tech, did a lot of computer stuff. And through all of that, I wrote. I'd been writing since I was like, I don't know, eight, nine years old. I'd always been writing. I never realized that I could actually get paid for it until I was a lot older. It wasn't until I uh, had divorced my first husband that I actually was starting to make any kind of success with my writing. But you always had to do something else because like art, it just you know, it doesn't pay you enough to live on. And so now it's all about art and the garden and the dog. And if anybody asked me, you know, what my three things were that I knew the most about, those would be my three things. It used to be writing, but if you asked me, you know, what editor was it at what publisher house now, I don't know that anymore. And I'm okay with that. It was the writing part of my life was fabulous. I think I had to write to heal myself in a lot of ways. And I enjoyed teaching writing because I worked with beginning writers if you ever saw those ads in magazines years ago that would say, we're looking for people who want to write children's books, send for your free aptitude test now. That was the Institute of Children's Literature. And I taught for them for quite a few years while I was working full time. <laughs> it's funny is it, you, you recount what you do to some, what you've done in your life to somebody else. And it does look like a lot, but when you look at it yourself, you, you don't see it as that. So it's kind of interesting to have somebody else have you ask you questions or get you talking or like me, I'm rambling, rambling, rambling with no particular point. Except if I go back to the beginning to say, don't listen to the negative voices in your head, I'll only listen to the positive ones. If I had listened to the negative voices in my head, I never would have submitted another book for publication after um, comments on my first one. I never would have submitted art to be in an art show. I never would have... Um, never would have applied to teach because I didn't have a formal teaching degree. My degree was in business management. You know, don't listen to those voices in your head. And some of the voices in my head were uh, former family members. And that's really hard when people that, you know, love you or supposedly love you don't support you in what it is that you want to do. You're back. <laughs> Are your pies done, Maggie? You missed all the horror stories, so that's good. Wow, I need to figure out, I, I know some of you guys sew on camera, but maybe that's what I need to do when I get to the sewing part of the journals. I need to be sewing them on camera so I can fly through them. Let's see. So does anybody know how to tell how long I've been on? Can you guys see it from your side? I can't figure out how to, oh, I bet if I looked at my camera, huh? Let's see. Oh, okay. I thought it was about an hour. My voice starts to tell me when it's been about an hour. I'm out of practice from teaching. Oh yeah, I did physical teaching too. I taught poetry. You guys have heard that story before. I taught poetry to uh, incarcerated teens. That was a lot of, a lot of fun. Very hard work, but a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Lorna. Thank you. You know, animal throw up is, I think, one of the most difficult things to deal with, with cleaning up. Wow, look at these. They're stacking up. They feel so good. Let's see. We'll have an orange journal cover. We'll have the little tassel. Have the journal that goes behind it. Should I keep going? Have you guys had enough? Yeah, that would be me. Gag, gag, gag. I'm so grateful my husband does most of that cleanup if he's home. Keep going, okay. Oh, hi, Danielle. I missed you coming in. I'm sorry if I was yabbering, yabbering, and I missed people. 
All right, let's see what else we have. More of these little guys. I need to make sure I use the small ones for the small tassels. So I have a limited number of these and I don't know when they'll come in. All right, should I be rambling with the purpose? You guys ask me questions. I'll answer questions about whatever is. Anyone there? My phone got hot. So yeah, hello, sorry, my phone got hot and I need to remember that I've got to, um, I got to get the OBS studio and get things set up so that I can stream from my computer because I forget that after about an hour, my phone gets hot. I knew there was another reason I went about an hour. So we'll see, maybe I can get through the greens and see how things go here. You guys are also helping my hours. I need like 350 more hours to reach my 400, 4,000 hours um, for YouTube. So I really want to do some more live streams so I can kind of increase my hours there. I wonder if I get a fan or something to blow on the phone. I'll have to think about that, see what else I can work out. Susan's fault. Yes, my fault completely. All of you guys that had to reboot, I'm sorry. It was... It was my hot phone. Well, maybe I should have had the AC going full blast. That's always a good idea for me. All right. <clears throat> maybe it was my, you know, inner voices telling me to shut up that I'd had enough to say already today. <laughs> ramble, ramble, ramble without a point. Something else I'm very good at, rambling without a point. No, oh, no, I got you, Debbie. Yeah. At least I finally figured out when I first started streaming, I couldn't figure out how to stream for, or how to, not even streaming, just doing a video. I couldn't figure out how to do it for more than like 10 minutes. And so I had to change some settings in the phone. But when it gets hot, I don't think the, there's a setting I can do on it. But I'm going to try, um, try and remember to turn on the AC next time. And then I don't know if a fan would work or not. Let's see, I think that's, but I sure appreciate you guys hanging out with me and helping me be productive. That means I'll have an excuse to kick back and watch the ball game tonight, right? Now I'll be making, vid I'll be making tassels while the ball game's on too. I made a lot of those Patrick squares while we were watching the ball game. Got them all glued together and then I just sit here and sew. For some reason, it's funny, my husband doesn't care about the sound of the sewing machine, so the sewing machine lives on my one of my desks in the living room because I can't seem to just sit still and watch TV. I've never been able to do that. I always have to be working on something else at the same time. Oh, Shelby, I'm glad to hear that you like that series. I've actually found a few more places that I want to do a video on and hope to add to that series maybe in the next week or two. You know, it's, it's such an important thing for all of us as artists to think about, you know, where our images are coming from. And I got so frustrated seeing so many people look for things on Pinterest and think that it was okay to use that I really wanted to give them other options for looking for images. And, you know, there's, there's never a reason to use something that isn't available for free, really. There's so many things out there. Sure, it might take you a little bit more time to look for them, but then, you know, you can also just go look for, for the kits on Etsy that various people do. We've got so many talented digital designers out there. Wow. I'm just kind of blown away when I start looking at the kits to see, okay, who else has done something on this topic that I want to do? I get blown away by the quality of the digital art. Shelby, that's it. There's just so much out there if you just know where to look. And then I still find things that's like, oh my goodness, I never thought about looking here before. And then somebody asked me the other day if the images in the National Archives 
were uh, copyright free or you know okay to use. And I had not looked in the National Archives before. And most of the images are not. There's some, but I find it very clunky to search through them for anything that you really want to use. So I uh, I don't go there. But there's still, there's a lot of them. A lot of the museums are making things available. There's also a lot of places, and maybe I should do a video just on, on that one video on some of these other places that they want you to, um, they're free to use. They don't charge you, but they do want you to acknowledge where the images came from. And when we make journals, sometimes that's difficult. Uh, and it wouldn't work for doing digital prints, you know, because you wouldn't necessarily be able to make sure that everybody had that on their uh, their journals when they printed them out but if you're making them for your own use and you could uh you know put acknowledgments as to where the stuff came from there's some really great places in the uk there's a museum shoot <clears throat> someone else might know it they uh, have all these beautiful watercolor images that are absolutely fabulous and they're free to use they release them to the public but you do have to tell oh it's the welcome Maybe I said that wrong. Night, Debbie. Thanks so much for being here. Really enjoyed seeing you. Really appreciate your spending some time with us. W-E-L-C-O-M-E, -E, I think. And I might be saying it wrong. There might be another accent thing there. Danielle, if she left, I'm saying it the only way I know how to pronounce. Does anybody know how to pronounce the gal who was here? Her name was Danielle, to my U.S. eyes but it had an umlaut over it, so I don't know how to pronounce it that correctly. Pink Rose, you doing okay? I see a lot of messages being checked, deleted there. Oh, I did it again in my top chat thing. Let me flip that to live chat, make sure I haven't missed people. Oh, okay, it is correct, all right. <laughs> the umlaut made me nervous, I didn't wanna mess, I, I, you know, I do that all the time. And then once you say somebody's name wrong, it's in like my head wrong, I don't know about you guys, but it gets in my head wrong, and then I feel like every time I say it, I say it incorrectly and I feel bad. I mean, it's kind of hard to mess up Susan. Susan is Susan is Susan. Whoops, a little too enthusiastic there. Okay, this little paper clip holding the ring is actually working better than I thought it would for tying these things off. I think after the stream, what I'm gonna do, rather than tie more tassels, I think I'm gonna go cut all the fabric. I've got it picked out. So I cut all the fabric, because that's time consuming. So then while the gal makes up her mind which size she wants, I'll at least have all the fabric cut. And the dog's gonna wanna go out soon. Although right now she's hiding in my husband's office because we live up in the, in the mountains and uh, there's lots of ridges and valleys around us. So sound ricochets very oddly and they're doing some road work and so every once in a while we'll hear a big boom and she thinks it's a gunshot or something I guess because she takes off Danala Danala thanks Vincent <laughs> So Danielle, what are you doing today? Well, good. I'm glad we can make Vincent laugh because, you know, laughter is good for the soul. See, he's got an easy to pronounce name. Unless there's supposed to be an accent someplace else. We can give him a couple of accent points somewhere and I can mangle those well. I'm really good at mangling. See, I'm finding all these things I'm good at. I'm good at lollygagging. I'm good at mangling names. 
I'm very good at getting thrown off of horses. I don't do that anymore, but I think I have the horses to thank for my bum shoulder. Well, they made the shoulder worse and then age made it worse. Ah, in the Netherlands. Do you know what, Lorna? I have, I hate to say it, I have like seven Edith Holden books on my shelf, and I have not used a single one yet. I need to do that. I went nuts when I found them, and I have not used any of them up. I, um, <clears throat> I think what happened is when I got started making my jumbo journals, I had so many orders for those. And they weren't using any of that kind of ephemera that <clears throat> I just forgot that I had so many books. Uh, sorry, I needed water. So I think I need, I'm going to do a video showing some of the books that I found in the used bookstores and online. And then I need to start ripping those babies up and make things. Lauren, have you ever tried to calculate how long it takes you to make a journal? I start keeping notes on the hours and then I think I kind of freak myself out. So I stopped, but I just made a mess of this. Oh, what am I making? I am making tassels. I haven't cut them off yet because let's find the right size here. So uh, for ICAD 2019, which was an index card a day, I made a bunch of the, I took a bunch of index cards and I made patchworks on them. So I have patchworks in all these different colors. And then now they're going to become journals, which I don't have a finished one here yet because I sent them off to the client. But there's going to be just a small journal, fabric wrap journal, and then this will go on the front. But actually it's going to have, it's going to be more like this with lace on it. And then this is the quote that she wants on them. And then I'm going to put just a little tassel and it's not a fat tassel for my big journals. They have a lot of tassel, you know, really fat tassel with a lot of charms and beads, but these are going to be small journals with not a lot of blank you know, pages in them and just blank. So it's just going to have a skinny little tassel on the side and then a, a charm. Two to three weeks. Yeah. I'm really amazed when I see people tell me they made like a journal and I mean, I can make a little, one of these little ones in a day. But if I'm making all the ephemera and stuff to go in them, it's weeks. And yeah, depending on the health, if I have to stand too much, it takes me longer. That's why I started my Make Ahead series for ephemera, because I really was trying to get ahead of the game. But it seemed like every time I did that, I would get an order that would use up all my stuff. So I'm guessing the Make Aheads isn't quite, I don't have enough Made Ahead yet, I guess. Twenty-three day tour of Europe. Wow, that sounds nice. My husband used to go to the Netherlands a few times for uh, work travel, and he would always. I collect blue and white china and cobalt blue glass, and so he would always bring me home some of that. That's like one of my one of the few things I kept from the big house when we transfer when we downsized to the small house. Yeah, a lot of work goes into a journal. Lorna, me too. We are so much alike. But then I also look at the people that are doing them so fast, and I think they're probably a lot younger than I am too. <laughs> maybe when I was 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, maybe I would have made them fast like that too. Now, not so much. I'm not so fast. But <clears throat> it's the same thing with writing. I was a slow writer. You know, I would hear about people that, you know, oh, yeah, I just I knocked out my, you know, the outline and then uh, finished the book in like three months. And it's, you know, 350 pages long. And I'm like, OK, it's been a year and I'm still working on this one. <laughs> so what I didn't learn in writing and that I'm trying to learn in art is to enjoy the process. It's not about getting to the finish line. Well, except for like I have an order for so many of these. So it is about getting to the finish line. But I am um, it's. It's really about the process. Like, I mean, I, I stop. If I wasn't here on the video, 
I swear I would just be doing this and just like gathering up my tassels and just fondling the fabrics because it feels good and because these stinking little index card things make me happy I can't tell you how many times a day I come in and just play with them or well, maybe I can do that next live stream because I got to get the lace on all of them so the process is important and I think learning to slow down and appreciate each step of the journey is important and I think if I went fast the one time I did a journal super super fast I was miserable doing it. It was a deadline um, that I, I didn't want to miss, but I was I didn't enjoy doing the journal. And I think, I mean, it was a nice journal and I'm proud of it, but I think it shows through. I think our love when we take our time. Good night, Debbie. Thanks for hanging with us for a while. Appreciate it. Rosemary, you're right. Yeah, my husband, <laughs> he's an economics major, so he um, he kind of rolls his eyes sometimes when he sees what I'm charging for things or how much an hour it is. But I, I tell people I would do it even if nobody was buying what I'm making because it makes me so happy to do it. So that tells me that I have learned to enjoy the process. Oh, Lorna, that's terrific. Good on your rehab team. Wow. Yeah, I find I can't do anything. My my dis not a disability, but my um my body issues are bad shoulder, my my dominant shoulder, my dominant hand, and I've got both um arthrit I've got arthritis, carpal tunnel, and tendonitis, and it's all chronic and it's all aggravated. By, and then I've got degenerative issues happening there too. But it's all aggravated by overuse. And you think, okay, all you're doing here is tying knots. Well, all I did on Saturday was cut the fibers. And I cut the fibers. So each tassel has, I think, seven fibers in it. And I am cut the fibers for 120 tassels. And by the end of the day, my whole right side, I couldn't hold a cup of tea in my hand. Charged by the square inch. Wow. Wow, Lorna. I think that's been my problem all my life, though. Even with my writing, um, I didn't charge as much as I should when I was contracted to do freelance stuff. And the last straw, though, was I did a bunch of um, ESL books for a Korean publisher and, you know, they're used to outsourcing a lot of their stuff. So they didn't pay well at all. But, you know, I did a lot of books for them. I did like 30 books for them. So it looked like a big check when they came in. But then when I started figuring out how much, because writers, we would usually get paid by the word if we're doing that kind of work. You know, and I think it was, you know, a few cents a word. It was nuts. Absolutely nuts. So whenever i telling my husband how much I'm charging for something, he's like, well, at least it's better than that Korean project you did. <laughs> Yeah, but your time isn't free. And that that's that's the thing that everybody keeps reminding me and I'm really bad about. Our time isn't free. Um, if I had, you know, grandkids that lived close to me, my one grandson lives too far away for me to see him. But if I had other things that I wanted to do with my time and I had to really, you know, watch how many hours I could spend doing art, it would have an even more impact. But I think because we're not doing traditional day jobs, we tend to think of our time as, as something like that as a freebie. And I don't think it is. I just need to remember that. When I was working full time and teaching and trying to write, you know, I had to pick and choose what jobs, you know, do I want to do a freelance job that's going to give me $1,500, but take, you know, a month of time. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was nuts. The things that I did, or do I want to spend, that month of time working on my novel that has no guarantee of being sold, but feel fills my soul a little bit better. Absolutely, Rosemary. If we don't value our work, nobody else is going to value it. And when I first started writing many, 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 many years ago, <clears throat> I went to a writing conference and Mary Higgins Clark, the um, 
famous mystery writer. I was standing in line with her at uh, the cafeteria waiting to get fed. And we, she was, she was so nice and so gracious. And I was so nervous, you know, being around somebody so famous. Uh, and I asked her what the best piece of advice she could give me was. And she said, you have got to treat yourself as a professional long before you have the right to call yourself a professional writer, because that's the way everybody else is going to judge you. Well, that stinks, Lorna. That stinks, but I am glad to hear that your rehab team helped you find something else that you could channel all your beautiful brain into because your the journals that you make are just absolutely fabulous. And yeah. And I always notice when you post them, I mean, they seem to sell very fast for you. So I'm glad for that. I'm glad that you've got another outlet. I think that would be the hardest thing when I hear about people that have certain injuries and they can't do anything any longer that used to bring them great joy. It's just the hardest transition. My son, who just turned 40, I don't know how that's possible because in my brain I'm still 27, but uh, he's got muscular dystrophy and it wasn't diagnosed until he was a young adult. And he was a mechanic and he loved his job as a mechanic, loves cars, loves tearing things apart and putting them back together again. And uh, when he got diagnosed, uh, it was because he could no longer lift his arms above his head to, uh, to do the work. And even though they were, he was working in a, a car dealership auto shop and he just couldn't lift his hands over his head to do the work on the cars. And so you we know, went to the doctors and found out all the horrible things that were going on. But now, you know, all the things that he loves to do involved using his hands and he's got an upper body mus type of muscular dystrophy that affects the upper body. So it's just, he's getting weaker and weaker in that part. He got into woodworking and he's been able to do some of the stuff, but there's a lot of stuff he still can't do. And I just, just my heart bleeds, my heart bleeds for him. Shoot, I don't have all the purples. I can't do those because I don't have all the purples for sure. Let's see. Um, this would be the blacks. So I guess we can use this color there. I'm almost out of my pre-cut fibers for the short ones. Rosemary, how did you come to art? Have you always done artsy things of one kind or another? I went to my first collage class to help break writer's block. I think I've said that before, but I've always been a maker of one thing or another. Uh, much to my mother or grandmother's dismay with the messes I would make. I was always a better mess maker than a mess cleaner upper. Everyday rehab. Yep. That's what writing was for me. And then I really think, you know, I hadn't thought about it for a while, but I really think that I, I did the writing in order to heal the part of myself that didn't know my dad because so many of my things were, my, my stories, my books were about finding your place in a family. And once I located him and some siblings that I didn't know I had, uh, the desire was gone. It was like, okay, I, I answered all my questions. I know how the family goes together now and I'm done. <laughs> ah, you grew up with artists. Yeah. I'm the only one that did anything like this. Well, I'm an only child, but my mom and my grandmother, well, my grandmother sewed, but it was more because, you know, that was just the generation that she was raised in. Not that I think she took any creative joy out of it. So I don't know where my creativity came from. Oh, which also added to me feeling like I just didn't quite fit in the family because I, I was the only person that wanted to do the sorts of things that I did. So I guess I have always marched to the beat of a different drummer, but 
Luckily now I found my tribe. I had no idea that uh, YouTube was going to be such a wonderful experience and help me meet so many fascinating people and talented people and inspiring people. Never, never thought that. And it's funny, I was cleaning up my computer a few weeks ago. I found a whole bunch of old videos like years ago when YouTube was really new. And uh, evidently I was going to do some kind of a poetry channel. I hadn't, I'd totally forgotten I was going to do anything like that. It was really kind of funny. All right. What was I doing? This, this seems like too many. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Maybe I need to stop and think about what goes with what here. Um, I don't have that. I, these are my blacks and my browns are mixed up. That's what it is. Because so I think I only have two. I may call it quits on these because I'm going to have to go sort out my fibers and figure out what I'm missing. So I'll put those aside, but let's see what's done. There's a lot. All the pretty tassels. All the colors we got. Yellows and blues and reds. Yeah, I think that's why I don't mind not traveling is because I've got the internet so I don't feel like I'm all on my own. I've got people I can talk to any time of day or night. You can go online and find somebody that's streaming somewhere if you want to chat. These are going to be fab. Well, I am very grateful for all of you that hung with me today and chatted with me and listened to me ramble on and on and on and inspired me to be productive. So I appreciate that. And I will uh, sign off for now and be back again soon, maybe with the next, with the larger journals or maybe when I'm trying to figure out the lace to put on everything and I can sit here and just glue the lace on before I sew it and chat. So I will take off. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.